Hey everyone, I hope y'all are having a great day and today I'm so excited to be reviewing The Final Empire, the first book in the Mistborn trilogy by Brandon Sanderson. I'd like to start this review by thanking the members of the booktube community because without them I never would have picked this book up. I probably never would have even heard of this book. But with booktube, you can't escape the ubiquitous love for Brandon Sanderson. My favorite booktubers rave about this trilogy in particular all the time, and Vilda from V for Vilda, you can always count on her to pester me to read some Sanderson. So thanks, you guys. Friendly reminder to myself, to future Sophia, when so many people in a community you love recommend you a book, it's probably really freaking good. So if you've been browsing booktube, and somehow haven't been exposed to this trilogy, I'll let you know a little about its content. The Final Empire is the start of a pretty epic fantasy series in which some people, called Allomancers, have the ability to draw special powers from metals by swallowing them. There's an extremely convenient chart in the back of the book that I constantly referred back to when I was starting to read this book that tells you which metals produce which powers. Our main character is a teenage girl named Vin who starts off as a street urchin, she's a part of a thieving crew, and she's very mistreated, malnourished, barely gets by. But then she gets involved in a plan with this new crew that involves taking down the final empire, overthrowing the Lord Ruler. It's radical stuff. Now the plot is far too complex to explain in just a couple of sentences, so, you know, that's just, that's, that's all. That's all I'm going to say. My main impression of this book after finishing is impressed. I am so thoroughly impressed by Brandon Sanderson's ability to craft a story like he does. And despite the fact that everyone on booktube praises him, I went into this book thinking I wasn't going to like it. Because fantasy, it's not exactly my genre. But after this book, it just might be. I don't care if you think you don't like fantasy, I still want you to give this book a try. It's pretty long, it might take a while to get through, but for me it went by so quickly. I never wanted to put it down once I got past like the first hundred pages. Initially, I wasn't really feeling it. I really didn't like the writing style. Actually, I don't think Brandon Sanderson really has a writing style outside of his astonishing plots and extensive world building. His prose is very straightforward and simple. There's no beauty in the way he strings his words together. No, with Brandon Sanderson, it seems like the beauty lies in everything else. Plot, characters, background, world building, the list goes on. Pacing, for the most part, was pretty solid. The beginning was a little bit slow for me, and occasionally there would be lulls in the plot, but that was more than made up for by all the mini climaxes that Brandon Sanderson throws in. The characters were great. I completely fell in love with Kelsier. I loved him so so much, but more on that later. Vin was a fantastic protagonist, although I'm not really feeling her name. I was frustrated with how quickly she let her guard down when she was in front of a, a certain character, but again, more on that later. Overall, she rocked. She kicks major butt, she's super powerful, and I love her. The rest of the crew members are all fabulous. Characters, just all in all, very, very good. But the main thing that leaves me in awe of this book is the plot. There is always so much going on and Sanderson builds things like tension really well. Sanderson is a master at weaving plot lines together. There are so many twists and turns in the story I wouldn't be able to count them. The plot prompted me to think of all these theories and then later just proved all of them wrong. There's so much going on that when a plot event occurs and you have a question about it, you quickly forget your question until he answers it later on in the plot. I was constantly entertained and surprised and thrilled. There are so many high points, but there are also quite a few depressions. By the end of this book, I was so emotionally drained. Also, something I love about this book is its length. For me, it's not uncommon to read a book in a series and think that you hardly got a complete story arc in that installment, but that is so not the case with this book. You get a complete full story with this book and it leaves you extremely satisfied. I don't know what more I can say to convince you to read this book if you haven't already. Just, just read it. Go and read it. Now I'm going to go into the spoilers, so if you haven't read it, I need you to leave. Please read it. Come back. We can talk about it later. But don't spoil yourself. So bye. Goodbye. Goodbye. Okay, spoiler time! Oh my god, there's so much to talk about. This video is gonna be like an hour long. Kelsier's death 
hit me like a monster truck. It was so painful. I was reading a big chunk of this book on Christmas Eve and I was reading, reading, I got to Kelsier's death, check my phone, 12.30 a.m. Christmas Day, and I was like, oh, the bay is dead. Merry Christmas to me. Kelsier was so fantastic. He was excellent at keeping his crew together, and he had the foresight of Dumbledore in the way he planned for things to continue after he pulled a Jesus. His death hurt so, so much. I couldn't think about anything else for a really, really long time except for how much I loved Kelsier. And then there's Vin. Love her. She's very strong, extremely powerful. She can do things Kelsier can't do. She's clever, and she's brave, and she freaking killed the Lord Ruler. After less than a year of training, there's definitely something abnormally strong about her, and it makes me wonder whether she's some kind of hero, like a hero of ages, considering that's the third book in the series, but Maybe not. All I know is that she's ridiculously powerful and I cannot wait to see her progress even further. Training scenes are actually some of my favorite scenes to read about, so I'm all for it. Especially now that she knows that she has some kind of weird connection with the Miss. I loved Vin, except for the way that she would lose sight of her goal whenever she was with Ellen. Ellen? Ellen? I don't know how to pronounce things. Now, I ship Vin and Ellen like nothing else. I would skip ahead while reading to see when they would next encounter each other just so that I know I would have something to look forward to. Though admittedly, they did fall in love a bit too quickly. But anyway, yeah, I love them, but I also love a spy who knows her place. The way she blurted out her question of him sleeping with Ska woman, he cried in front of him. It was all so very noble and ladylike of her. Moving on. I can't believe she killed the Lord Ruler. When Kelsier's plan was first being laid out, I thought the entire trilogy was the story of taking down the final empire, but no, it just happened in one book. Reading this one book was like reading an entire series, and I love that. It just makes me even more curious as to how much the next books in the series have in store. When the Lord Ruler was an old man at his palace, but a young man when he, uh, murdered Kelsier. I immediately thought that he had learned, um, ferrucumi? Fer you know, mm, that thing, you know. But I never would have made the connection that the Lord Ruler was actually the terraceman from the logbook, Rashek. Whenever Brandon Sanderson reveals something such as this, or something like Kelsier's intention to die the whole time, everything falls into place, all the pieces click, and I'm left wondering how in the world did Brandon Sanderson pull something like this off? This author, he is the god of plots. He has so many secrets and layers. <laughs> I wonder how he keeps track of it all. Also, Marsh becoming an Inquisitor, I never never would have seen that coming. Cezed was such a cool character. He saved Vin in her most dire situations, and because of that, he's one of my favorite characters. Ferukami is very interesting, and I really hope he continues to make appearances in the next novels. I love the way Brandon Sanderson ties together the minor relationship stories, like the way Vin proposes to Kelsier that maybe Mare didn't betray him at all, and the fact that Reen died protecting Vin, promising, swearing that she was dead, even though the whole time she thought that he had just betrayed and abandoned her. Those cute stories, it just, it soothes the heart, I think. But nothing can really soothe how much I'm still hurting over Kelsier's death. I want him to come back so badly. How is the crew even supposed to function without him? He was the life of everything. He was the center, he was the visionary, he was the dreamer, and he was the legend. And now he's dead. And I'm never gonna get over this. Okay, I think that's it for me. I'm sure there are a billion of other things that I really wanted to mention but just forgot about. So please tell me your thoughts on the final empire. I'm sure everyone who's already read the first book has probably read the entire trilogy. So please don't leave any spoilers for the next books in the series in the comments. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you guys are having a fantastic day and happy reading. Goodbye!